is up and it is me the kid caleb coho here to host my first fandom fights match i am so excited here today because we have two really awesome competitors we have the best competitor to ever play the game robert the hobbit parker taking on jake the maestro marangoni who had a really really strong debut against rj and i just cannot wait to see what happens here but i'm not alone i'm joined by the awesome commissioner of this league tim smith how you doing buddy I was gonna make a joke, but I like I like this. It's a commissioner and not some crap that Kane wants to make up. I think we found Kane's replacement, kid. You're hired. Yay! Job of employment. I'm a pro college kid. All right. So, what do you think about our two competitors here today, Tim? Honestly, these are like you said. These are great competitors, strong competitors. Uh, one a great debut in Jake Marangoni's match, Robert. He is a dominant force with anything geek. He's proven that in the past. So this is going to be what I call like a clash of the titans and also a look at like a mini championship match, but only in three rounds. Absolutely. All right. So here in round two, we have a new way of doing things that I've noticed from watching. Is that now each competitor will get one minute to do their own promos. So let's go over to promos. Well, here I am in the quarterfinals of the fandom tournament. You know, this should honestly be like a semi-finals match or a finals because I'm going against a guy who I kind of respect more than anyone, really. And that's a good friend of mine, Robert, Robert Parker. This is one guy who I've always been afraid of facing in fandom, especially. <laughs> um, ever since I got into the league, ever since I first started in my like debut match in Movie Battleground, he was there at the very beginning. And now I get to face him. We've always wanted to face each other in just pure trivia. We've always had similar interests. He's always criticized my never seeing Lord of the Rings, which he can now no longer because I've actually seen the trilogy now. But we've always wanted to face each other just to, as a, just friends and friendly rivalries in a, in a sense. So this is something that I've always wanted to see. And I know Robert's a much stronger competitor than me. I know that luck is going to play a big factor into this match, but I'm just going to give it my best because that's all it comes down to. I want to just go distance with the future champ, in my opinion. So here I am uh, in the fandom. I won my first match uh, against Malcolm, who is a great competitor, a great guy, good friend. Um, and I'm here representing Alpha Alliance against another Alpha Alliance member, Jake Marangoni, a guy I've had a lot of respect for for a long time, really good friend in the league, uh, former teammate, faction members. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Jake. I think that's mutual. Um, he and I are good friends, but we always have wanted to face each other in some aspect, and we never really have in pure trivia, so I'm really excited to see how this goes. Um, I think he sells himself a little bit short. You know, he had, I believe, as far as points are concerned, the best singles debut of anybody in this league, but I had a higher percentage rate in my debut, so I think we're both excellent players, former teammates, faction mates. This is going to be a great gentleman's match. I cannot wait to see what happens, and yeah, Jake, best of luck. This is going to be a hell of a fight, and I uh, can't wait to see where this one ends up. As always, good guy Robert Parker with some awesome words of encouragement for his competitor and Jake bringing on a, a little bit of self-confidence, but I don't think he deserves that self-confidence because he is really, really good, especially with that singles point debut that he had. But this is Robert we're talking about. Uh, I'll get us into our proper introductions so that we can get them right to this match. Introducing first, representing Alpha Alliance with a record of one win and one TKO. He is Jake the Maestro Marangoni. And his opponent, representing Alpha Alliance. He is the greatest of all time, the master of the hobbits and the Lord of the Rings. He is Robert. The Hobbit Parker! All right, gentlemen, round one is going to work like this. You are each going to get 10 questions from 10 different categories. This is our whiteboard round standard. Each question worth one point. You know the drill. Any questions, gentlemen? Uh, no, three repeats this. and a challenge, right? Just clarifying. Three repeats and one challenge. 
Perfect. Thank you. All right. I will issue the first question and we will ping pong like that. Your first question here comes from the wizarding world. What did Hagrid name the dragon he won in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? The Hobbit really knowing his picture, Harry Potter right there. You know, I, I'm like that nasty king. I have seen all eight Harry Potter movies and Fantastic Beasts. They are great movies. And we'll go five, four, Yeah, you really three, hate the king, don't you? Two, absolutely. One, hands <laughs> down, we'll go to Robert first. Norbert, the Norwegian Ridgeback. That is correct for one point. And Jake? I had no idea, so I just put Fluffy because I knew it was the name of the dog. Ooh, incorrect. All right. Gentlemen, your second question. In the realm of Pixar, what does Lightning McQueen call Radiator Springs when he's stuck with Bessie? Never have seen this yet. I'm sure as you, the kid, probably have. Oh, of course. I've seen all 20 Pixar movies, and there's only one bad one. That is Cars 2. <laughs> no matter what the king says, Inside Out is a masterpiece. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go over to Jake. I quickly scribbled garbage. I know it's not right. Incorrect. And Robert. Uh, deep cut cars quote. Uh, cute little town. I don't remember. We were looking for a hillbilly hell. Ah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know the same exactly as well. Damn. Yeah. No perfect rounds, but this next question comes from the category of DC movies. Who plays the Riddler in 1966's Batman? Uh, I can remember reruns of this on TV when I was just a wee little kid. I have seen every episode of the TV show and I own the movie personally. I love this series. I also Best have Batman, Adam West. I also have this on Blu-ray. Uh, you might want to check security Four. tape at your house, Eight. Robert, just to be safe. Two. <laughs> one. Pens down. We'll go over to Robert. Frank Gorshin. That's correct for one point. And Jake. I knew the first name, Frank. Oh, incorrect. We have to have the full name. Yeah. All right. All right, gentlemen. Your next question comes in the realm of Marvel. In Marvel. What pop star cameos as Agent M in Men in Black 2? So glad we put Men in Black in Marvel now. See, I think that was a dirty, rotten trick by the King and his cohort, Kane. But, I mean, <coughs> maybe it's just the King duped Kane, but I think this is a dirty question. <coughs> Sometimes I kind of wonder that too, kid, with that dirty King. Three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go over to Jake. <laughs> Michael Jackson. That's correct for one point. And Robert. Damn it. I didn't have it. That's not the answer I've written down. Ooh. Incorrect. We'll move over to our next question, which comes from the category of Disney. Disney movies. What is the name of the leader of the wolf pack in The Jungle Book? I doubt Kane McMillan would be accepted on this answer. <laughs> I mean, Kane really does love this movie. I, I personally enjoy the movie as well, no matter what that dirty, rotten king says. Yes, him and his uh, cohort anymore with Kane. Kane used to be such a good boy like you, kid. I don't know what happened. Well, maybe it's just because he put the king on as his partner. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go over to Robert. Akila? Uh, how'd you spell that? A-K-E-L-A. How did you pronounce it? Sorry. I said Aquila. That is correct for one point. And Jake. I did the exact same thing, Aquila. It is with the night, but we will accept it because spelling does not matter. Oh. The pronunciation <laughs> was correct. The pronunciation is what they matter. <clears throat> All right, gentlemen. I know one person is going to be jumping up and down for this one. Your next category of Middle Earth. <laughs> he wasn't jumping up and down like I thought. I'm ashamed. Who was the second dwarf to arrive at Bag End in The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jake. 
Jake said he watched all the Lord of the Rings movies, but did he watch all the Hobbit movies? That's the question. I think yeah. I, I think that one is biting him in the ass right now. Uh. Three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go over to Jake. Tupin? I can't remember. That's <laughs> uh, incorrect. Go over to Robert. Ballin. That is correct for one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Played by Ken Stott. Yep. Your next question, gentlemen, comes from The Fast and the Furious. What is the name of Hobbs' partner? Played by Gina Carano in Fast and Furious 6. I was just Whoa, looking for the first wow. name. At work. Wait, wait, just first name? Just the first name. Yeah. Oh, man. I was watching this on my voodoo at work before I was done this morning. Great movie. This is this is the only thing I'll agree with the king on is that this is my favorite fast. Can you and repeat the movie. question, please? Yes, I can. I'll be one of your repeats. Yep. What is the name of Hobbs' partner, played by Gina Carano, in Fast and Furious Six? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go over to Jake. Maria, it's wrong. As incorrect, go over to uh, oh, Robert. I didn't fuck this up. Riley? That is correct for one point. Nice. Big I his name's Riley. I should have known that. All right, gentlemen. Your next question is in the realm of Star Wars. In Star Wars, what planet do Rey and Kylo Ren meet for the first time in The Force Awakens? The name of the planet. Some good, good deep cut questions here. I mean, I didn't have anything to do with the question writing on this one, and I wouldn't have gotten this one at all. <laughs> Five. Boy, it must have been written by that dirty, nasty king. Two, one, pens down. We'll go over to Robert. Uh, it was Maz's planet, Taco Dana? That is correct for one point. And Jake. I was right. It was Mars Kanata's planet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, your penultimate question comes from the realm of kaiju movies. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what is the name of the Godzilla film released in 2016? Yeah, I, f I feel you on that. Whoever said, God damn it for kaiju. Uh <laughs> That was me. <laughs> yes, I, I feel you. I feel you, Robert. The only uh, big beast movies I know is Jurassic Park. I guess you could say. I wonder if we're ever gonna count Jurassic Park movies as kaiju, because that might be awesome. But at the same time, are they kaiju? Five, four. The world may never know. Two, <laughs> one. Pens down. Let's go over to Robert. It was like Godzilla Resurgence or something like that. Incorrect. We'll go over to Jake. Uh, Shin Godzilla. That's correct for a huge it. point pickup. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Gentlemen, your last question. One of my favorites. Again, this has been a good game for me. Back to the Future. What is the name of the dance that Marty's parents get together at? I'm running out of room, so I'm going to write small, just so you guys know. I hope you can see it. Yeah, just hold it up. You'll be yeah. Right. We know um, you won't pull any nasty tricks like the king. Five. No, that would be <laughs> terrible. Three. <laughs> two. One. Ten cells go over to Jake. Enchantment under the sea. That's correct for one point. And Robert. Yeah, the enchantment under the sea dance right in the corner there. There you go. That's correct. At the end of round one... Robert is up with seven, and Jake trailing behind him with four, but anything can happen as we get into round number two. Round number two works like this. You'll each get a chance to spin the wonderful wheel that we have. If you land on a category you like, we will give you five questions with each one worth two points apiece. You can default to multiple choice, but it takes the, the, takes the point value down to one point. If you don't like the category you spin, you can respin it again, but you're stuck with whatever you land on, unless, of course, you spin players or opponents' choice the first time. Then you're stuck with that. Any questions, Jim? Sorry, can I get a score update one more time? Uh, Robert is in the lead with seven. Jake is right behind him with four. Okay, thank you. All righty. I will bring up our lovely wheel. 
And don't do what I accidentally did in the movie one. There we go. <laughs> nope. We're good. Don't worry. I am a pro. All right. I will give you the categories that are here on this wheel. We have DCEU, Disney, Opponent's Choice, Middle Earth, Scores and Soundtracks, DC, Back to the Future, Player's Choice, Kaiju, and Fast and Furious. Robert, since you are in the lead, you get the choice. The chance to either go first or default to Jake. I'm gonna go first. All right. And the spin is in, and it looks like you will land on Disney movies. Would you like yeah, to keep it or spin we're, again? We're staying with that. We are staying with that. <laughs> All right. I will be issuing to you these questions. So let's just your first question. In the realm of Disney movies, what Oscar nomination did The Hunchback of Notre Dame receive? Um, I'm gonna say, what year was that? Um, I think then it was still called Best Original Music, so I'm gonna go with that. That is incorrect, Jake, with a, with a chance for a two-point steal. It's not the best original score. That is correct for two points. Nice. <sighs> really? It was a big two-point pickup. Can Your I, second okay. question. It's called, it's called best music, like, and then there's like a subcategory. Let's categorize so it. It was, it was okay. best original cool. score. Yeah, okay. it was best original score. Okay. All right, your second question in Disney. What is the name of the babbling robot played by Martin Short in Treasure Planet? Ooh, um, that, I watched this recently too. Um, the category was like, or not category, what am I talking about? Um, the character, he was called, just like a first name? Yeah, it's yeah. just one first name. Yeah, he was called Ben. That's correct for two points. Yeah. Nice. Your third question. What Disney film follows a New York zoo gang attempting to save an adolescent lion from Africa? <sighs> fighting at the, um, at the challenge. I'm going to take multiple choice. Your options are A, Home on the Range, B, Valiant, C, Madagascar, or D, The Wild. The wild. That's yeah. correct for one point. Your fourth question. What two Disney animated films were released in 2011? Um, you need both from uh, does, Are you counting Pixar? Not Pixar. Disney animated films. Disney animated films. Okay. Um... Uh, I really don't want to go to multiple choice. Um, not counting Pixar, that's really hard. Uh, I, I gotta go multiple choice. Your options are A, The Wild and Tangled, B, Wreck-It Ralph and Frozen, C, Winnie the Pooh and Mars Needs Moms, or D, The Wild and Valiant. You dick, it's C. Mm -hmm. That is correct for one point. And I was not the question writer, Robert, <laughs> that was the king. Mars needs. Oh, I can't believe. It. I didn't even know that was that was Disney. Yeah. <laughs> and your fifth I'm... and final question in Disney. What story? We're looking for the name of the story. What story do Tweedledum and Tweedledee tell Alice in 1951's Alice in Wonderland? Oh, um. Can I like describe the story, or do you need like the official? I need the. Title? There is a name. There is a name because it is also a song, so we do need the name of the song okay, slash story. It's like uh, it's the thing with the freaking what was it called? Um, it was okay. The Walrus and the Carpenter. That is correct for two points. Nice. I knew it was the walrus and something. <sighs> At the end of Robert's turn, he is up 12 to Jake's six. Jake, you now have a chance to spin the lovely wheel. He has. I will pull that for you. 
Not only do I have a chance, I have to spin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think he has a choice. Yeah, I don't think we've had um, a player say, I don't want to ever spin. Damn Mars needs <laughs> moms. <sighs> I know we'll edit that part Can't out, but filthy mouth by the Hobbit here. I expect it better. <laughs> Well, I knew Winnie the Pooh. I didn't know the other one. <laughs> I blanked on Winnie the Pooh. I, I thought they were awesome. talking about cars, oh, too. Yes. <laughs> All right. Jake, your chance to spin the wheel. And it lands on Back to the Future. You know, there are some things that, that, that I didn't want to get. So I'm gonna, you might want to respin that. No, I think, Jake, you might want to respin that one. There, there are worse things to get. So I'm going to take it. All right. Uh, Tim, do you want to issue him his questions here for Back to the Future? All right. Jake, your first question in Back to the Future. Finish the quote. No McFly ever amounted to anything in the history of blank. Hill Valley. That is correct for two points. All right, Jake, your second question. What is the name of Marty's band in Back to the Future? Multiple choice. I'll get it multiple choice. A, Pinheads. B, Rock and Rolla. C, Eggheads. Or D, Rocketeers. Is it A? That is correct for one more point. All right, Jake, your third question. What is the name of Biff's Casino in Back to the Future Part 2? Oh, Hmm. I got an idea, but I want to get multiple choice. All right, multiple choice. A, Biff's Palace. B, Pressure Point. C, Pleasure Palace. Or D, Biff's Casino. Hmm. I'm going to say D, Biff's Casino. Incorrect, Robert, a chance of steal. Is it C? C is correct for the steal. All right. Jake, your fourth question. Jennifer writes her number and what else on the back of the flyer she gives Marty in Back to the Future? That's a great question. Um, it's a great question that deserves multiple choice. <laughs> All right. Multiple choices. A, call me. B, I miss you, C, sorry, or D, I love you? Uh, Unlike what girls write now. Uh, I, love, I love you. That yeah. is correct for one point. I was like, it's call me? No. It's you something. knew that. You knew that, Jake. Maybe. I wouldn't have gone multiple choice if I really knew that. I needed to think about it. All right, Jake, your last question in Back to the Future. What TV show is playing on Doc's TV at the start of Back to the Future Part 3? Oh. Oh, fuck. I just watched this recently. Shit, shit, shit. Um, what, can I get a score, if that's okay? Uh, Robert is up with 14, and you are right behind him with 10. Um, let's go multiple choice. All right, multiple choices. A, I Love Lucy. B, Howdy Doody. C, Batman, or D, The Dick Van Dyke Show? I'm going to say, oh, fuck. I'm going to say A. That is incorrect, Robert, a chance to steal. Was it Howdy Doody? That is correct. For the one between point. A or B. Yep. All right, so at the end of round two, The Hobbit is in the lead with 15, and Jake right behind him with 10. But anything can happen as we get into round number three, which is the betting round. Each opponent will have to bring back the whiteboard as they will each be given the same five questions from five different categories. We will tell you the category and you tell us whether you'd like to bet between zero and two points. If you get the question right, you win those points. If you get it wrong, you lose those points. Uh, Jake, you still have three repeats and a challenge. Robert, you have two repeats and one challenge. Anything else you need to know, gentlemen? Nope. All right, then let's get into round number three. Your first category, gentlemen, is in Disney. How many points are you willing to bet on Disney? We do need the bets written so we can see. Yep. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go over to Robert. Uh, one. All right. And Jake. Same. One. 
All right. Your question is, how many years did Davy Jones promise Jack as captain of the Black Pearl in exchange for service on the Flying Dutchman? How many? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, yes, I can. How many years did Davy Jones promise Jack Sparrow as captain of the Black Pearl in exchange for service on the Flying Dutchman? I just rewatched this movie not too long ago. I actually quite enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I don't want to be dead and serve on his ship. He seems kind of a a hole. Well, the king would be the a hole running that ship. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Hands down. Let's go over to Robert. Wild guess. Ten years. Incorrect. And Jake. I also had ten years. <laughs> also yeah. incorrect. We were looking for thirteen. Going. 13. 13. Oh, I can hear a 13 years. Yeah, I hear that now. <laughs> that was a terrible impression, but that's fine. All right. Yeah. Gentlemen, your next category is in the category of Marvel. How many points would you like to wager? Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Let's go over to Jake this time. Hey. All right. And Robert. Also, too. All right. Both going big. All right, gentlemen, your question in Marvel. What is the name of the band Beverly is a member of in Howard the Duck? <laughs> oh, man. I just watched this movie, too, like a week ago. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> it is not a good movie. I'm pretty sure the king wrote it. That's why it's bad. Five, four. Uh, repeat the question. Repeat the question. Come on. All right. That'll count second. as your second repeat. What is the name of the band Beverly is a member of in Howard the Duck? Will that repeat help? Jake, you want to use one too quick? No. Three. Two. No. One. I don't know. Pens down. We'll go over to Robert. Did the repeat help? I said cherry bomb. It's something like that. It's that is correct cherry. for two Listen. points. Yes. Wow. And Jake. I had no idea, so I just put the Tim Robbins project. That is incorrect <laughs> for a loss of two. So Jake Shite. has seven, and Robert has 16. 16. I was literally just thinking of the That's song. A nine bomb. point deficit. The third category, gentlemen, is Star Wars. How many points would you like to bet on Star Wars? This might be the nail on a coffin. Four, we don't know. Three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go over to Jake. I got a bet too, so. Two. All right, and Robert. I am betting one. All right. Your question. What is the name of the Jedi Master who was shot down during Order 66 in Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith? Wait, there are so many who are shot down. What are you talking like about? in his plane. He's in a plane. He gets shot down. He's the only oh, one that gets oh, shot down okay, in the sky. Okay, literally. Okay, from the sky. Literally, okay. literally shot down. Because there's there's a ton that get shot. Like you went literally. They shot all get down. shot. Okay. They all get shot. Exactly. Shot. That's why I was so confused. Cool. Does that count as a repay or is it just semantics? That was just semantics. You get, uh, if you want the repay, pens down. We'll go over to Jake. Play Kane. That is correct for two points. And Robert. Master Plokun. That is also correct, which makes it 17 to 9. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, your fourth question will come in the realm of James Bond, everyone's favorite spy. Oh, How many points come will on. you figure? Come on, Robert. <laughs> I do this to you now. You've already got it. Go <laughs> five. You've already got the win. Three, two, one pens down. We'll go over to Robert. How many points Big you want to bet? Fat zero. <laughs> and Jake, how many points you want to bet? Two. Congratulations. All right. Your question. I'm pretty sure that's over. Yeah, yeah. but we play the question we'll anyway because we already gave the category. That's get the question. Oh, okay. 
All right, gentlemen, your question. Sorry, that was on me. Uh, what is the name of the villain in 2006's Casino Royale? I should have bet. This is my favorite Bond movie of the few I've seen. You can play for stats purposes. Oh, even can I? Okay. Any points. okay. That, and for the sake of stats, you can keep playing. Just for fun? Even yeah, though I'm not winning fun. points off of it? Even though you're not going to get points, it counts towards your stats. Okay. Five. Four. Three, two, one, pens down. We'll go over to Jake since he bet points. Congratulations, Robert. It's Le Chief. That is correct for two points. And Robert. I also had Le Chief. All right. Well, that would have counted, but you didn't bet any points. And your winner, by way of technical knockout, Robert the Hobbit Parker. That was a very, very close game, actually. It's, uh, the final score was 17 to 11. Uh, so it, it could have kept going on anyone's game if Robert had just bet points and lost it. It all came down to how math worked out in round three. Uh, but Jake played a really, really strong game. But the fact of the matter is, Robert is the greatest of all time, the best to ever play the sport. He is the Lord of the Rings for a reason. So it makes sense that the best player to play the game is gonna go up against Alex Warden in the semifinals, so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a very interesting battle to see what'll happen. What do you think, Tim? Uh, yeah, very very interesting. Both of these guys going back and forth, and I, I expected no less. Like especially with round two, Jake caught up tremendously. I think he's kicking himself by going to multiple choice on a couple of those Back to the Future questions. I could just tell. And yeah, Robert wins this one, won it in round three with the math. And I would also suggest maybe in the future, maybe maybe the kid and the king have a nice little uh, match to, because I, I kind of like the kid anymore. <laughs> you know what? I would totally beat the king in any match because he's a fraud and a phony and needs to go down a few pegs. I don't know how he even made it to the semifinals against Chance Ellison. I don't even know. But... Yeah. <laughs> I digress. We'll go to our post-match interviews. Alright guys, so it's me, the kid here, interviewing Robert the Hobbit Parker on his epic win today. Great job, man. How do you feel? I, I feel good. I This match really could have gone either way. There were a couple questions uh, especially in uh, in round one that I feel like I probably should have hit the but I, I'm trying not to like kick myself for those um, there's a couple times I went to multiple choice that I didn't need to like uh, in Disney but you know both Jake and I played good games uh, we both did better than a lot of other players in round one both of us still had solid round twos you know he had some uh, some, you know, more difficult Back to the Future questions. I had some more difficult Disney questions. So I don't think either of us should be hanging our heads on the way we played. I think we both played incredibly. Um, Jake, I still think, is a hell of a threat in this league. Hell of a contender. Uh, still the highest, I mean, even now, still the highest point scored in a singles match ever. That's a record he has, and I think that's incredible. Uh, he will hold that for a while because he scored a lot of points. He's still a great player. Can't wait to see him back against whoever he might be up against next. Um, but as for me, I'm looking forward to the future, looking to the next step in this tournament, which is Alex Omega Warden. This is a player, Alex, who I've known for a long time. We've played each other before in different settings, in singles and full metal and things like that. We've never faced one-on-one -on -one in any kind of geek setting. Alex has a hell of a trivia mind. He's a great competitor. I think I'm a little more well-rounded than he is. Uh, I think with the help of the Alpha Alliance and with some studying, I think I'll be able to come in here and I think I'll be able to make it to the finals to beat him. I am determined and I am focused and driven to win this title, to win this tournament. This is mine for the taking. Alex, you had two good matches. I had two great matches. I'm ready to make a run. Jake, you played a hell of a game. Can't wait to see you next, bud. You're an amazing guy. This is one of my favorite matches I've ever played in. Uh, you're the best. Alex, I'm gunning for you. And then Caleb or Chance, I don't care which one of you wins, I'm beating you in the finals. Yeah, you stick it to that dirty, rotten king, Robert. All right, I can't wait to see you play Alex. As always, uh, very humble, very, very uh, uh, face competitor. Uh, as always, Robert, it's awesome seeing you play. 
And uh, I can't wait to see you uh, win the belt. Uh, hopefully, we'll see. Um, all right, Tim, take it away with Jake Marangoni. Okay. Uh, very excited over there. I think more for the interviewer than the competitor, but Jake, unfortunately, math didn't go your way for round three. Uh, how, how you feeling after that match? I'm not feeling like really disappointed. I it, not my best performance by far. It's it, it sucks getting like especially take uh, take KO because I just I it, it really came down to the questions and some of them went my way in like the in, in my first match against Sarge. Like, I I was knowing the questions and I just happened to and that just happened to be in my favor. This one there was just a couple of questions and in a certain categories that I just was not um, anticipating for. Um, I do not think I was gonna win and I stand by that. I'm not saying that I'm underconfident but i absolutely think that robert should be the uh champion after this tournament he's one of the smartest he takes the time to learn everything he to study this i just want to see him win just to, to make me feel better from from losing to him but it sucks because i really wanted to play, face uh warden i just was like dying to face him so at least i can hope that uh, robert kicks his ass and then hopefully I can take him out in movies. So um, I'll be taking a little bit of a break and just focusing on getting the Warzone tournament done. But in the meantime, there is someone that I would like to face. Oh, okay. Someone who I've seen in play. He was in one of their play-ins for both fandom and movies. And he's someone who I think luck has taken him incredibly far into the tournament. <laughs> I'm talking about Eli McCaig. Ooh. I want, I want to play. And when I say take a little bit of a break, I'm not talking about like a month or two months. I'm talking like a week because I just need to recharge my batteries. I need to watch more Star Trek films. I need to watch the Star Wars films and understand all these planets' names. But I do want to get back and I want to face Eli because I helped him in that play-in match. I created him as a superstar in movies. Tim and well, no, sorry. Kane helped him in the fandom. I want to see what he can do in fandom. Yeah, it, it would be a very interesting challenge. And, you know, like I said, you kept on on par and round two really helped you catch up. Round two was in, okay. In one. Round one really affected me. And, and, and round three, I should have certain, uh, the first two questions bet no points, but it's it was just never gonna get my way. And I, you can't with this game. You can never ask for it to be your way. You've just gotta you gotta go with the flow, so to speak. But I just yeah, hope Robert is good in this tournament. I hope he wins. He's a good All friend. Right. And there's nothing there's nothing rivalry that changes. We're just we're just gonna be Alpha Alliance members. And I, there's so much respect. I have so much respect for him, and I can't wait to see what he does. You know, one thing that's weird. I think. <coughs> I talked to Ryan yesterday, and he was just telling me, he's just giving me confidence, like, yeah, good luck with uh, your match against Robert. You know, today I've just been feeling really kind of dozy and just busy, like, I haven't been really acting kind of myself. Huh. I don't, like, I don't know what's it, what it is, but I, I don't know. I've had this, it. yeah, we've had this with competitors before with this, of talking to Ryan and not feeling that they're a game when they face i mean do you think this is going to be something that affects you against eli when that time comes or well i, I don't know if this is ryan at all this could just be my, my like a, like a, my butterflies or something I, yeah. I just ever since then i just haven't been feeling like kind of myself so i don't know let's just let's see what what i do with um eli and uh i'm just waiting to see what what happens there yeah, I mean, yeah, very, very interesting. I mean, we've, we, we, we've heard, we've heard that before. So maybe it's just people just have that butterfly going into the matches, which honestly can honestly happen. But with the world we live in now, who the hell knows? I mean, look at the world we live in now. We have the death of a franchise for one, as I cry as a child. Um, but who knows? And I know we'll see you back. Jake, he had a great performance today. We'll see you back again and cannot wait for you. I will be cheering in the war zone for you to lay the smack down on Alex. And for our final thoughts to get us out of here, let's go back to my favorite now. Fuck the king. Let's keep the kid. 
Kane, make that happen. Kid, take it away. Overall, this is a really, really awesome match. Robert just absolutely just proving why he's the Lord of the Rings, and and Jake putting up a really, really good match himself. Uh, but uh, yeah, I can't wait to see Robert going up against Alex. And you know, Robert, you're so good at this sport that I I would, well, I would be honored if I could have you maybe help me coach as my coach for when I take on the king. Hopefully, let's make it happen. I want to beat the king, but I need, I need seriously, like a lot of help. And of course, I would obviously go to the best person to play the game to coach me. So what do you say? I would love to coach you to beat that selfish little king. Yes! And, right. and here's the thing. The commissioner of overall is here. Kane, make it happen. All right, it's been a great match here. Great competitors, and we have our great semifinals all set in place. So, with that, we'll do plugs and we'll get on out of here. Going over to the Lord of the Rings himself, Robert Parker, our victor for today. Where can we find you? Sure, you can find me on Twitter and Letterboxd at RBRTPRKR98. It's my first and last name, no vowels plus a year. Other than that, you can see me representing Alpha Alliance everywhere I go and all on the rest of the Trivia Spheres and make sure everybody who is watching goes out and supports everybody else and all of the Trivia Spheres. We are here to support everybody else. Absolutely. And now let's go over to our unfortunate loser, Jake Marangoni. Where can the good kids find you? You can find me on Twitter at Pretentious Hack. You can also find me on Facebook. You can find me on all these movie league, worldwide movie games. There'll be trivia. They are multiplex, movie warzone, and movie fandom. I am one of the co-hosts, one of the commissioners, one of the people the heads of movie warzone. We are still in the tournament, and we got a couple more matches to go in the first round. Um, I love everyone what, the, what they're doing, especially fandom. You guys do such great stuff. Kane, we love you. Thanks for all the edits. There's a lot to edit in this one. But... <laughs> I'm not sure if you'll leave this in, but thanks so much. Leave it in. Leave it in. Leave it in. Thank you so much, guys. And I'll be looking forward to seeing what Robert does in the semifinals against Warden. All right. And we'll go over to our commissioner, Tim Smith. Where can they find you? You can find me here, keeping everyone in check here with Multiplex Entertainment. Much like uh, what has been said before, support all this movie trivia community it helps bring us all together for stuff that we love to do with and or multiplex entertainment movie war zone uh all right sorry <laughs> sorry Kate. my, God, my mind's it in. gone leave it in <laughs> This, this is gonna make it at the end of the year, but yeah, 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 yeah. 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 this is gonna end up with that bloopers real. Jake, you save all your bloopers too. This is gonna be great. <laughs> okay, three, two, one, and you can find me just like has been harkened before to support this whole online community with worldwide movie games, with full metal trivia, and of course multiplex entertainment, where I am over here keeping everything in line. Uh, for fandom, it's been great seeing this with Warzone, the same thing, with our TV division, and our soon-to-be sports, which will be starting up uh, within the next week, I do believe. So, I think for that, you can find me with that, and follow us on Twitter at MultiplexYT. All right. And, guys, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Caleb Coho. That's K-A-L-E-B-K-O-H-O. Caleb Coho on YouTube, where I do my music stuff. Coho Productions, where I do my movie stuff. My group, The Forks, put out our debut album, Shoot for Teams, back in February. You can pick that up if you like rap on all of your digital stores and streamers. And you can find me right here, hopefully hosting more multiplex entertainment matches for fandom fights and helping out with all that good stuff. And, you know, cheering on Robert. So, uh, thank you guys, and we hope you have a good night. What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is Doc for the bringing you guys your stats from the match. In today's matchup, we had Robert Parker taking on Jake Marangoni in the final match of round number one. In this matchup, we had Jake Marangoni going 4 for 10 in round number one, while Robert Parker will take a strong lead going 7 for 10. Round number two, Robert would also go 4 for 5, and Jake would go 3 for 5, and then Robert would go 3 for 4 in round number three, and Jake would go 2 for 4 in round number three not being able to catch up to the hobbit and finishing 9 for 19 for a total of 47 percent while robert would have a weird 
underperforming kind of going 14 for 19 for 73 percent i mean robert shame on you not scoring 90 percent accuracy rate um but hey you know what you still get awarded you're the number one competitor in the phantom fights top 12 of all time whether it's accuracy and just rankings yeah robert parker congratulations you're number one going into the semifinals. chance ellison is number two caleb kobo number three and alex warden number four should be a very fun semifinals coming at you next week on the phantom fights tournament matchup this has been stock bringing you guys your stats for the match